I would say that most of those master members stay not just because of the communication, but because of the leadership skills that you get being a member. Hey guys, this is part number two, as stated in the title. If you missed part number one, definitely go and check it out first. If you have any doubts on what is Toastmasters, on what are the communication skills, go for it. And guys, remember that there's going to be a part number three. So click on the notification bell if you haven't, so you get the last video on this video series. And now let's go and talk about leadership skills or how can you improve your leadership roles while being in Toastmasters. So we already talked about communication and why is it important, but I would say that most of those master members stay not just because of the communication, but because of the leadership skills that you get being a member. Which in my opinion is very funny to go because you have public speaking fear and then you improve your communication skills and eventually you just became a leader. Well, of course, not just eventually, you need to work towards that, but it's a very great deal in the sense that you went for improving something or maybe removing your fear of public speaking and you got communication and leadership skills. I don't know about you guys, but I really think this is a great deal. And why not guys, even the full motto of Toastmasters is where leaders are made. So at least you should expect something on leadership skills. And of course, I don't want to bother you with all the hierarchical stuff, organization and the global structure of the organization or how the group uh, structures, clubs, members, leaders and so on. But overall, I would say that the organization favors leadership roles. It all starts by being a volunteer. No one's going to ask you, no one's going to oblige you, no one's going to pay for you. You need to be a volunteer. And you may start with very simple things. For instance, being a timekeeper or maybe taking notes on an evaluation of someone. Maybe you get something more complex as being a Toastmaster of the session, which is the person in charge of having the control of the session, presenting the speakers, maybe also presenting the evaluators, maybe explaining to new people what's the session all about, trying to control if there's any issue. This is great for the Toastmaster. And then maybe even go for something of more responsibility, of more commitment. For instance, you may want to go for a BP of membership. As you can imagine, you are in charge of getting more membership. This means a lot of people going through the club and convincing them to stay. Also maybe a president of the club, be the head of the club, be the one that motivates the team to work towards the club. Maybe even you go further, not only in your club, but you go to the area which manages three to five clubs. Or maybe you want to go and help as a division leader or director, which helps with a lot of areas, which is about 15 to 20 clubs. Or maybe even go further with your responsibilities and work with the international organization. Whatever tasks you take, these are indeed working towards your leadership skills. And of course, as you can imagine, this is all voluntary, requires a lot of team building, team working, coordination, communication, commitment, and of course, a lot of leadership. After all, you need to become a leader. And I want to share a very quick story on myself. And I was a Toastmaster member for six months. I had no idea of the organization itself. I only knew my club and I knew that I wanted to improve my public speaking, not that much my leadership roles. And leadership comes in the most unexpected ways possible. This time, the president just went off. And then there was no one willing to take the president role. And I said to myself, why not? Should I take it? I like the club. I like the mission. I want to improve my communication skills. And of course, I need to have this club active. Otherwise, the club will go just away and be a ghost club. And so I took my second leadership role, which was president. I didn't believe it at the moment that I was a leader or I was the head of the club, but it was time and of course a lot of repetition of going there and eventually understanding that the club really depended on the president and the executive committee, which is all the people that work with you in the club. Ultimately, by doing, repeating, doing, repeating, going there, presenting myself at the president, having to interact with others, having to sell the membership, having to form the club, having to form the committee, I understood or my brain realized that I was eventually a leader. And for me, this was great because I didn't see or saw myself like a leader. I just saw myself as a person that wanted to improve public speaking. But since then, I already consider myself a leader. And for me, this is very important. You first need to believe it in order to become it. 
So if you do not believe it, then you are not going to become it. Another aspect I wanted to share with you is the management of resources. This is key, especially for leaders or persons in leadership roles. And I'm not talking about just Toastmasters, but I'm talking overall. So if you're working as a senior engineer or you have your project engineer position or so, you are working in a position that needs to work with a lot of resources. Let it be human resources, let it be of course monetary or economic resources, let it be also the most important resource of all, time. Now, of course, a lot of you already have a lot of experience with this. You have been working with other activities, maybe hobbies, maybe you prepared something back in school, or maybe you work in a conference. Maybe you already work as an intern and you know about this, but there's a lot of people that may not be quite familiar. They may just go through life just doing what they are told. And eventually when they get to these leadership roles, they have no idea on how to do it. In my opinion, Toastmaster is great for this. They will prepare you not just theoretically on what is a leader, what, how to manage resources, how to team build, how to work with your team, how to coordinate, how to communicate and all this, how to set maybe important schedules, uh, working with time, with responsibilities, tasks and so on, which of course are definitely great for leadership building. Now I also talked about team building and this is very important. Sometimes you will be able to build your team and this is very important because there will be no excuses because you were the one building the team. So if the team fails and you're the head of the team, you selected the team, the only fault goes with you. Now this is very important. Knowing how people interact between each other is very important. Also knowing when to motivate, when maybe to reprint, when maybe to congratulate in public know maybe when to punish in private is also important. All these things are for sure crucial for a leader. And I will really say that not only team building, but also team working. Sometimes you will have no decision at all in your team, but you need to know how to work in a team. It can be directly in a physical team that you can see in your same room or so, or maybe you are working online remotely, but you have a team globally, so you need to learn the different time zones and all that. So this is great because this is team working. You need to adapt, you need to compromise, you need to set boundaries in order to be able to work towards the same task or goal. And this is something that definitely companies value a lot. Someone that is able to work with many cultures, many religions, many people from all around the world is way much more valued than someone that has difficulties with other people and that cannot interact or does not have the emotional intelligence to work with people from all around the world. Another great way in which you will show your leadership skills is via organization of events. And I really love this one because events are not just created randomly. Someone had to prepare them, someone had to schedule them, someone had to work with a team, someone had to invest in them in both uh, economically and timely speaking. And this is definitely favored in Toastmasters. It can go as simply as organizing a in-person meeting. So for instance, right now we are working online, but if you want to go to a place, you need to select the place that is near or that all people are willing to go. You need to pay for the place maybe. You need to schedule it, you need to clean it, you need to prepare it. You need maybe to bring some equipment. You need to, of course, ensure that all the people get there. And not only that, you need to ensure that the session is going to go through out with any problems. All of this, of course, has a small tint of leadership if you were to ask me. But if you are looking for something that requires much more leadership, I have something for you. You can work with different clubs in order to create a inter-meeting, so a lot of clubs in a single meeting. You can work in an open house, maybe you need to bring a lot of people, and for that you will need to have a lot of skills in marketing, in advertising, maybe you need to print some flyers, maybe you need to pay some Facebook ads in order to ensure that a lot of new people come to the open house. And of course, if you are in a recruiting campaign, you need to organize the people that are going to be presenting the product, let it be a Toastmaster membership or so, that they are well trained, they know what to say and ensure the sale of the membership. Maybe we're talking about organizing contest and maybe this sounds that it's not that hard, but really it requires a lot of organization. You gotta have your team, you gotta have the judges, the evaluators, the keepers, the Toastmaster, the person in charge of the room, maybe with the microphone, the one in charge with the technology, maybe you're using a projector, 
ensuring that the public knows where to sit and a lot of things that you need to carry all along. For me guys, the easiest way to go and improve your leadership role is by being a president because you're gonna have quality sessions and you're gonna have an increase in your membership. And whenever you are low in membership, it's very hard to have quality sessions because there's not that much people going there. And in order to sell the membership, you gotta have quality sessions. People are not going to go there. And if they go there, they are not going to be willing to pay for the membership. So one Toastmaster tip, whenever the membership is low, this is going to be a very crazy time for you. One of the things I learned in Toastmasters, well actually in life, but mostly in Toastmasters, is that it's not just about you. It's not just about you becoming a leader. In order to maintain yourself as a leader, you need to be able to make other leaders. This is of course more of a social structure or community thing, not that much into actual Toastmaster values, but I really think that leaders need to be able to facilitate leadership roles to other persons. If you see that someone has the potential of becoming a leader, which in theory most of people are able to, you have the obligation to do that. And for me, this is the ultimate goal of a leader, being able to capacitate others to become leaders. And eventually you will see that you will relieve your workload because others are willing to work, others are making other leaders and the organization is going to be very, very strong. One very quick tip I will say is that when you are a president of a club, you're just thinking of, you need to improve the club, you need to have the education goals, you need to have your membership, you need to bring new people here, you need to have great quality sessions. But you're not thinking in the future on who am I going to give the presidency next? Who is going to continue with this great thing I am creating? Because this is something that we really don't think. We think about just working by ourselves, but who is going to continue with the legacy? Who is going to continue next? This is something that is very leadership in mind, and you will see this a lot in great companies. Great companies always work towards improving the human resource. They know that these entry-level positions will become eventually junior, senior positions, and eventually managers maybe. They can even continue to direct roles or C-level roles. And whenever you understand that, that all people go from entry-level and eventually some of these will end up here, and you invest on those, you will see that organizations are doing a great job. In the other hand, whenever you see organizations not working, not thinking ahead in the future, you will see that this organization, well, as I stated before, will not have that much of a future. And yes, guys, let's make a quick closure once again, and we are almost finished. These are some aspects that I wanted to share with you, how Toastmasters facilitate the leadership skills growing. If you're wondering how can you improve your leadership skills, I know it's not that straightforward. Communication skills, you can always go with friends, family, uh, professors, random people, and try to improve your skills. But leadership skills, very rarely you will see places in which you can practice that. And to Smasters International, any club will be good enough for this task. So if you want to practice this, definitely go and check out your nearest club. As stated before guys, I will be adding the links in the description and if you want to visit my club, you are more than welcome, also the link in the description. And finally guys, if you are a Toastmaster, please let us know your comments, especially on leadership. How does being a Toastmaster has helped you to become a better leader or maybe even a leader at all? Let us know in the comment section below. I'm pretty sure that people are looking forward for that content. On my behalf, that will be it. I'll see you in the next video.